all I want to do in this little video is show at least at a glance how I do my colouring. So let's start out by looking at the final picture which you've got up on the screen now. As you can see from the side here it's all built up from lots of different layers and if I expand the bunny folder you'll see various layers going down here and if I turn them off progressively I'll zoom in and see the effect so first of all I'll switch off that one knock that off you can see that's the colouring on the collar and that's some of the shiny bits coming back again and the actual shading itself the layers come off. See, we're just left with flat colouring, which looks like that. And if I go down further still, I can switch off the flat colours and switch off the background, and you can see the line art, which is what we started from. I want to basically recreate this um, from scratch fairly quickly um, to try and demonstrate the techniques. Okay, so this is my demo file, which is just the line art for the time being. The line art here shows fairly prominently that it's come off a scanner. You can see sort of jagged edges, pixelated lines, and it's only two distinct colors, uh, pure black, pure white, which, um, as you zoom out, you tend not to notice it so much, but um, if you want to increase the resolution as you colour, then it's always a good idea to try and clean up the line art in whatever way you can. What I did was to stick it through what's called a vectorizer, and what that does is it basically uh, computes mathematical paths and turns these raster lines into vector ones. And so if we scroll in there and look at that, if we now compare that to what the vectorizer produced, it's done that. Now this is by no means perfect, but um, it said, you've got to agree it definitely smooths things out a lot. Um, I suppose the first step to colouring is to get the flat colours in. Now, uh, Falamar taught me a very cool technique for doing colours and shading right, and it all starts um, by having a background that is halfway between black and white, so sort of pure grey or whatever you want to call it. If you want to get a picture that's basically black line art on a white background, uh, and you want a colour to show through behind that, you use a blending mode called Multiply and basically anything that is white gets let through and blends and anything that's black doesn't. So now I can switch on a layer I've got here underneath the line art which is just a big uh, flood fill of grey. And what that gives us is something that we can use as a, a base for finding the colours that we want to use. Now it's trial and error to pick up the flat colours that you want to use for starters and uh, these are the ones that I'm going to use. Okay, well the first thing I'm going to do is pull out uh, the magic wand and I'm going to start uh, flood filling areas within the image. And so just eyeing over the line art I'm going to try and find any region that would be white. So I'll start with the foot paw and Select a little bit under, back of the leg, belly, chest, and front of the face, and teeth, lip, underside of the arm. Now what this has done, if we zoom in, it has almost selected all, all that we want. Um, Depending on the quality of the lines, it'll either get close like this or not very close at all. Um, but in either case, if you want to make the selection fill out without having to go through it manually with the lasso, 
then I expand the selection and because the line the lines are quite thick in this picture I can probably afford to go out by two pixels and then the process of selecting anything that isn't selected already pretty simple just add to the lasso and now I switch back to the layer that I'm going to put my colors on grab my white and we're looking at 100% uh, opacity and a nice hard brush and I just paint onto the layer below and as you can see everything comes in scroll down chest in and zoom out a bit and we just fill in all the white patches I may have missed a bit but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm not going to worry about it and then I want to do the same thing with the areas in the picture that are going to be blue it's about as close as I'm going to get okay add in a few obvious bits that got missed out I would do this more thoroughly if I wasn't just demonstrating. Grab the blue with the eyedropper and paint onto the layer below. Repeat the process for the other colours. Well, assuming that I've done a thorough job of that, we'd end up with the flat colours. So what's the next step? Having got the flat colour, we want to get the shading down. Now there are loads and loads of different ways that you can do this, but the way that works for me, in a way I think it's sort of a cheats method, but it works, is to basically pick up everything that I've coloured, like control clicking on the colours, that turns that into a selection. I'll deduct that because I don't need that and then on my new layer I'm going to create a mask and I'm going to reveal the selection what that means is that as well as the main part of the layer there's a part of the layer that determines what gets through the mask and what gets stopped by the mask and because I've chosen to use the layer below as a source for that um, anything that I previously filled in is going to be visible and anything that's in the background or in one of the other characters isn't going to show and that's going to become, uh, it's become very obvious as to why that's a good thing when I do the next step. So I'm going to grab mid-grey again and I'm going to paint over everything on this layer and you think oh no I'm destroying all the work but I'm not because I'm just painting on top okay now I've got grey that I can start from. I'm going to grab white and grab black. It's my two colours on the swatcher. I've put the opacity down to 10% and softened out the brush. And now, draw it in, I suppose. Paint it on. So, you can see the wrong one there. That's alright. You can undo light with dark and undo dark with light and so on. I'm varying the size of the brush as I go. that'll do. I've done all the shadows, now I'm going to do the highlights, so I identify regions in the picture that need to be light. So the middle parts of all the um, objects. Anyway, you get some idea of what that does. After doing it the first pass, I'd probably go back and do it again, so darken the dark areas, lighten the light areas, until everything's looking quite three-dimensional, I suppose. Now, to combine the flat colors from before with the intensity information on this layer, I would 
pick a blending mode and overlay is the one that I usually use because it works and gives consistent results so if I switch from normal to overlay suddenly the two pieces of information combine and we've got shaded color um, now I would usually tinker and fiddle around with these a bit um, because sometimes you have other modes hard light is another one that works particularly well and you can even do a combination of them by duplicating the layer choosing one for each and blending each one about 50-50 so you see the result that creates which looks vaguely like what I did on the original picture let's have a look at that again started out like that and then it got that and then it got that and then it got that so that was three different blending modes actually so let's go back to the demo and so I'm going to start a new layer and I'm going to go back to my brush now I'm still using solid white solid black for this but 10% uh, opacity I'll demonstrate here on crease because it's a convenient place to start and first of all I'll do it and then I'll try and describe what it is that I'm actually doing so starting out with my large brush getting in some overall detail narrowing down doing some lesser detail narrow down again a bit more still right down and it's not immediately obvious as to what the purpose of this is but as it starts to come together we'll see that by drawing in areas of successively smaller brush sizes and then going over some of them again basically just evening it out. If I zoom out now you can see that that creates a shiny area. So I'll do it again down here. So I zoom out you see what that looks like. And having sort of done all the creasy areas, so let's pretend I'd, I'd done them all, then I'd go and grab another blending mode like overlay, and as if by magic, it just neatens out all of those uh, reflections. So on normal, they look kind of wishy washy, on overlay, they look more or less. Uh, shiny, I suppose. That's the desired effect. Now, as I do that on the creases, I would also do that in the larger areas of the picture. And you can afford to be quite liberal with the shiny areas. If I zoom out, Presto Changeo, shiny. If I use overlay on that, that looks pretty nice. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the main picture now, and I'll show you how those particular techniques got applied. So we started out with just the shading, bringing in the shiny areas, and then, yes, yeah, so we've got one lot of shiny, two lot of shiny. intensifying it, doing the shine on the pink parts, and that's pretty much it. So, rinse and repeat, uh, do the same thing for all of the characters, and the results are pretty nifty, I think. So, um, I hope that provides some useful information, and I'll talk to you later.